this is my chef EB1A story. I know a lot of people here like, oh, if you're an amazing chef, you can get an EB1A. Well, this is how we did it. Let's go. Hi everyone, my name is Joseph. I'm the managing partner here at Zion Associates, where we solve legal problems with creative solutions. So the legal problem was that this chef from China wanted to come to the US and work and get a green card. How? Right? And a normal chef, it's really hard because they don't have the requisite degrees. You don't, you're not an advanced degree professional. Maybe you come in on an H-1B, maybe you come as a temporary worker, but it's so hard to get a green card that way. You might do an EB-3 and wait an extremely long time. This client was a little bit better than the ordinary chefs. And so what we did was we got him here on an O-1 extraordinary non-immigrant visa. And then we filed an EB-1A, got a nasty RFE, we battled it and then we won and his entire family got a green card. So this is how we did it. We wanna share that with you. The first thing we had to do was to get him into the US on an O-1 visa and work at a, another big hotel. He worked at these big hotels and big restaurants in China and he was quite famous. He got a big picture and he won some awards and he got a lot of pictures with famous celebrities. So these are just the ordinary O-1 documentation. It's not very substantial. It's not like he published a lot of different books and he is constantly on TV teaching people how to cook. He's not a celebrity chef. He was actually in the kitchen making the beautiful cuisines that we all enjoy. So he was doing that. We got him to the US. He was working at this restaurant. The salary is unbelievably low. The leading expert, top chef, gets paid under $50,000 a year in the US. Some high schoolers driving sanitary vehicles make double that. But in the chef world, that's just a standard salary. And so no matter how famous you are, sorry, you just don't get more to create art. That is your choice. <laughs> Anyways, it was terrible, but we got him here in the US working for these big name restaurants, but he only has three years because that's how much an O-1 lasts. And, and then you have to renew it constantly, right? So within this three years, we had to prepare more so that he can EB get EB1A qualified. One thing we did was we helped him contact different publishers in China to talk about his extraordinary dishes. Obviously, cookbooks and cooking shows is a big deal in China as well as it is here, right? People love food over there. And so these big books talking about famous celebrity chefs, um, he made it on to one of the top 100 in his region. You know, top 100, it's still top 100. And we, they talked in depth about his dish and about his recipe and his upbringing. We used that to prove that he had a media publication. This was a national cookbook about that particular region. Obviously they have other regions, but we showed that there was, it was a huge book talking about his recipe, right? And talking about where all the different restaurants that he served and where you can uh, get that uh, dish. So now he has one media publication. So we kind of doubled and tripled that with different media publications about him and his dishes. And then we talked about original contribution, that he invented this dish. It's not like a patent or a trademark, but I argued and I used this exact quote, the discovery of a star does less to the happiness of mankind than the discovery of a single dish, right? That was by G.K. Chesterton, one of my favorite all-time authors. He was a foodie before foodies even existed. Um, so anyways, he invented a dish. This was a pretty awesome, good tasting, delicate dish. It was a cold dish, it was not a hot dish. USCS actually challenged it, saying this was in the cold dish section. Cold dish section seems like it's an appetizer. It's not as big and as famous as a hot dish, and therefore it doesn't qualify as an original contribution. I highly doubt this officer knew what they were talking about, um, but it was fantastic that we get to argue with a US immigration officer talking about the value of a cold dish versus the value of a hot dish and how a cold dish could just be as important as a hot dish. And he also did hot dishes too. It's not like he doesn't know how to do hot dishes. It's just that he invented this one dish that was really famous. And like I, we talked about kimchi, right? We talked about Korean cold dishes and how it's like a national staple. How can you look down on something that just because it's cold? I argued Subway's freaking cold sandwiches all day. Now, with that being said, the officer might be like, you, you made a recipe and you're trying to claim that you're extraordinary, but we had to make the argument that EB1A category is made for everyone in every field. As a chef, what do you expect him to do? Get an engineering degree and create an espresso machine? As a chef, your practice, your devotion, your craft is in creating recipes and dishes. It might seem easy by putting a few things together, but what do you think chemists do? And so we made all of these argumentation, submitted back to USCIS. I crossed my fingers because I really didn't know if this cold dish, hot dish argument, this original contribution argument would really fly, but it worked. And 
he got his EB-1 A green card. Now, this case, like all chef cases, are hard, not because chefs are not extraordinary, but because chefs, as their occupation and training, just don't deal with paperwork, right? They don't have receipts. They don't have their notepads and their drawings of their patent discoveries of the recipes. They think about food, they put food together, they cook the food, they eat the food, they give other people to eat the food, they eat the food. It's just, that's it. How do we take that and take his field industry as a whole and argue that he is best of the best, right? The industry itself, high salary is tremendously low, but we compared. At least he got $50,000 as a chef in the US compared to the peanuts that he was being paid back at the home country, right? And so we argued the high salary, we argued the publication, we argued judgeship, other people consult him, we argue original contribution, and we put everything together. And the fact that he was backed up by these big name corporations that hired him to be a chef. Well, it says something, right? The celebrity pictures, I'm sure it helps as well, although I don't, I didn't really put it in a particular section. But if the dish didn't taste that good, why would celebrities fly all the way over to take a picture with him, right? So that's the beautiful thing about EB1A. It's extremely flexible. Use what you can to make the best argument. This is my chef story. Thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.